when Billboard on Instagram posts that top 10 picture and to see like my name beside like Taylor Swift and Bad Bunny is just like so next level. Yeah, it feels very surreal what's happening right now. Hey, my name is Tate McRae, and today we're gonna be climbing the charts, looking at how my music has charted, and also my idols, how they've charted. But I don't really care how bad it hurts when you broke me. I remember the day I was on a walk with my mom, and I remember I was like, oh my god, I'm number one on like the bubbling under, the Hot 100 chart. And I was like, this is the biggest day of my life. When you broke me first hit 17. It's pretty wild because I feel like I've just been watching my favorite artists of all time on that chart. And I think at first, I didn't realize the capacity of what you wrote me first had done until I actually like got to LA and realized that it had, you know, gotten to a specific spot and gotten that big. When I wrote You Wrote Me First, I was 16. I was like, I have to put this song out, I really want to. The first time I had to like film my first ever like legit music video was with my friend, like back in Calgary on Video Star on my phone. It's only two passes of the entire music video. It's so crazy. It has like so many views now and it's so strange to just look back and see that it was literally made on a, an iPhone. When I talk to my friends, I talk so Troy was recording in Australia and I was recording in Canada and it was one of my first ever like collaborations and it all kind of came together just like version upon version like back and forth and then we ended up just releasing it and we hadn't even like met each other in real life yet. It feels surreal every time. I, I don't think there's like a, a feeling. I just feel very grateful that people know my music and are able to make it into their own lives and appreciate it. It's just very cool to me. I think half the time you don't even know what like m what means what and where you actually are until it like happens and you're like holy how did my song even get to that point but that's really crazy that it hit number one well Khalid was my favorite artist and I just remember like writing in my journal and manifesting like if I could do a collab with anyone it would be Khalid then I remember the day that um, he had just like DM'd me and it was so cool. I was like, I can't believe you know who I am. And I met him at the music video shoot. And it's a very like full circle moment when you get to collaborate and sing beside your idol. Feels very wild. It's pretty crazy that she's all I want to be got on the Hot 100. I always feel like when I write a song completely by myself, there's so much doubt that comes along with it. I write a lot of my music by myself, but as much as I love the song, I'm also its harshest critic. So you just like never know what people are gonna think of it. That one was a pretty vulnerable song for me and to see it translate to live shows and to see it get on the Hot 100, it um, means the world to me. How could you play me going up this chaotic? Especially a ballad like that on the Hot 100. I didn't even think that song would make a chart. <laughs> I think when songs you write that are that personal and that close to you, you're like, hey, this will be a fan favorite, and we'll leave it at that. But I, I feel like that song is, you know, ended up being their actual favorites, and I can't believe it even charted. All I know is 1035 was interesting because it was Tiesto's record, obviously, so I was just jumping on it. It was a full process. I mean, I had to fly to Dubai to film a music video, and we were there for like 48 hours. I don't usually do a lot of DJ records, so it was definitely a first for me. I feel like a lot of people figured out my music because of Tiesto. It's like a totally different side of the world, and, and demographic is his music. So getting on a song with him was eye-opening to just like a whole nother world of music. I mean, obviously, getting nominated for a Bill Music Award has been like one of my dreams for so long. It's a weird thing. You you watch all your favorite artists for years and years and years on the Billboard Music Awards and you're like, wow, like one day I hope to go and just like even attend and see them and to get nominated just feels like an honor and I feel like no matter what, I'll forever feel so grateful for that and just be in disbelief that it actually happened. I was so nervous to release this song because I feel like I hadn't released music for 11 months and so my fans were just kind of like waiting to see what I would do next and I didn't really know what direction I was gonna go in, especially taking that much time off and then coming back with a song and it being like my biggest debut of a song ever is just like 
the craziest feeling ever. It's been really exciting to see it on the Billboard Hot 100. Just because even in the, the global uh, 200, like seeing it get to like number four has been like so nuts. It's wild that this all started when I was 16 because I didn't even know if I wanted to like grow up and be a singer. I thought I was gonna be a backup dancer or something. So to see the success of songs that are coming from my bedroom and then obviously translating to the rest of the world was very mind boggling for me and still is to this day. I feel like now it feels like my job and I'm like, okay, this is cool. I get to like actually do this every single day and put my full attention into it. But when I released You Broke Me First, like I was still finishing grade 11. It is very crazy. Just uh, my mentality has obviously shifted a little bit. Noah Khan is so incredible. Honestly, just like he, he writes like real shit. He has such a niche style where he writes so particularly in like the specific place that he was in, really, really specific moments. And for something like that to cut through and obviously be so respected is so amazing to see. I think the best artists are the most versatile artists who uh, can touch in any genre. Even when I write music, I take inspiration from rap and country and folk music and then I write a pop song. <laughs> out of all of those inspirations. And I think that's the beauty of it, is you can make it into whatever you want. The art always comes first, and regardless of when it happens or where it happens, the fans are gonna go back and see that it's real art. And I think that's what's been happening with Noah. People are being like, wow, he's insane, and he has been insane for three, four years. And that's always cool to see that in an artist. I'm a big fan of Rosalie. I'm actually kind of a new fan in the last couple years. I got to see her perform live in LA, and it just is very rare that an artist comes along and puts on that good of a show. I've been a, a dancer my whole life, so obviously I have a different eye for watching shows, and I feel like I'm a little more like looking at the dancers behind her and how the production's set up and the lighting, and it's just pretty surreal to see that she's crossed over and made some like insane performances at like Coachella, and it just is very inspiring for my shows, and I, I try to look at her and be inspired as a performer. I think that Rosalia deserves to be on the Hot 100 1 million percent. Her music is incredible. The quality of her music is so good. Even the Sonics in her albums are just so out there. It just feels like she's put a lot of time and effort into making sure that her art is exactly how she wants it. Pop can be whatever you want it to be. I feel like it's a very broad uh, genre, and I think that's what people are wanting right now is just like fresh new sounds, and Rosalie is coming out with all of that. I feel like her music is just so catchy and fun. I would put that on, even though I can't understand half the words she's saying. I'm like, I would still put it on in my car and jam out and think it's a tune. I have been the biggest Post Malone fan for so many years. I've listened to all of his albums. I know all of his songs. I've been to so many of his concerts. I'm just a big fan and I think he is so talented. I feel like Post Malone had a pretty quick uh, <laughs> pop up. I think people quickly recognized how amazing he was and then fell in love with every single one of his songs and they all just became massive hits. I mean, you can hear a good song and be like, God, this is gonna be huge in two seconds. And I feel like that was the first time I ever heard Post Malone, like White Iverson and All Apart. And I was just like, oh, he's gonna be the biggest thing on the planet. Collaborations are amazing. I mean, you get to learn so much from other artists and being in the room, writing, experiencing how they record, how they do their records is all like a very cool process. Getting a song to be successful when it's on your own is just a, a different type of like, wow, I can't believe I did that. I mean, collaborations will always be so fun, but I, I do think that getting a song on your own to get that big and translate to people all over the world is a different kind of special. All I can say is that it's surreal and I just feel very lucky to be on the same chart as them and that my music is even in the same realm as them. I remember being like 13 years old, being like, I can never make the Hot 100. And so just to even be on there with some of my biggest idols is very surreal.